Hi folks, this is Klaus at Top Hydraulics. We will show you today how to remove the e-gear on a Gallardo Spider. Actually, we'll show it to you on a Spider. The process is quite similar on a coupe, um, but uh, Spider is a tad more involved in that we have to take the hood off. It's actually an easy job. You can do it together with a friend in an afternoon. Take out the whole e-gear e system so you can send it to Top Hydraulics to be rebuilt as preventative maintenance or if your e-gear has failed already. They don't last all that long, uh, typically 20 or 30,000 miles and these e-gears uh, will wear out, the seals in the e-gears wear out as well as there's some internal corrosion. Anyway, uh, we'll show you step by step how it's done. You don't need a lift, you don't need the Lamborghini computer, so it really is a do-it-yourself job uh, as long as you are a little motivated and this video should show you how it's done. So we'll be taking out a bunch of trim pieces, the air boxes, um, coolant um, reservoir, some shields, and suddenly we are at the e-gear. Uh, we'll pop off the right rear wheel and uh, get access to some bolts to remove the e-gear system and take it out and show you how to prep it for shipping. And in no time you'll have it back and have it better than new. Removing the hood is easier than you may think. We just have the uh, engine cover uh, partially open, not even up in the service position, position yet. And all that needs to be removed is, um, well, first wiring harness unplugged. Uh, there's the two connectors here. The little one is easy. Push a tab on the side, pull it apart. Well, I had loosened the big one already. It's really the same on it. You. Um, push down this tab and pull the whole thing apart, wiring harnesses apart. And now we're only on each side having to take out uh, a bearing bolt and the uh, top of the hydraulic cylinder. Uh, the bearing bolt is a um, five millimeter Allen. We want to pull the bolt out almost all the way then tap it in a little bit and the uh, bearing will come out, the bearing nut really that is. And um, I'll fasten it right now uh, because we're not going to take the hood off in this take. Anyway, uh, for the uh, ball joint at the end of the hydraulic cylinder here, we've already walked it off the center position. To remove this uh, ball joint, you uh, put a small fast screwdriver behind the uh, uh, sir clip, spring clip uh, on the ball joint and uh, walk the joint off center. We've done that already. You don't have to take the uh, clip off all the way, you just walk it off center. Now, all we have to do is pull the ball joint off, and uh, if this bolt was off, the other ball joint was off and the other bolt was off. We could just uh, lift the hood off and uh, walk it away. Um, for reinstallation, it'll land again on the front um, plate that the rollers can roll on. Uh, so you don't really risk scratching anything up. It's an easy job. Okay, to remove the air box air intake, on the spider, first we remove a couple of trim pieces to get those off. There were a, couple, a bunch of Torx bolts that we have removed already. Take these trim pieces off. And we'll find uh, some hex bolts holding a wiring harness on the uh, driver's side in place. Same thing on the passenger side. Uh, we'll find uh, and ten. A uh, hex bolt here, another one here, and below on a bracket, uh, hard mounting this uh, air box. And lastly, there is a connector to be pulled on the bottom. Note the tab on here. This tab needs to be pulled back uh, while you pull out the connector. Easy as that. Having loosened all those parts, you can again pull back the air box and lift it out. Okay, just a few more steps. 
Oh, there are four T40 Torx bolts holding this latch in place and um, two M10 hex nuts holding the uh, muffler, muffler cover in place. Lastly, you unplug this connector, you just squeeze on it and pull. At this point, you can maneuver the coolant reservoir out of the way. I would not recommend tipping it upside down, you just maneuver it out of the way. Then you flex the uh, muffler cover and pull it up. So this has been pretty straightforward so far. Uh, we have uh, removed the air intake box and uh, moved the coolant tank to the side, removed the heat shield from the exhaust, and now down here we can see the e-gear unit bolted onto the transmission. We'll show you shortly how that e-gear is taken out, but just for an overview, there is uh, some five, six hoses going from the e-gear through this um, heat shielded wrap uh, to the control unit over here. Actually on top you see the um, reservoir for the e-gear pump, which of course also uh, powers the clutch. So uh, the further removal is not a big deal either. We will be removing one uh, cross member in the frame here. We'll take the right rear tire off just for easier access to the back of the control unit. And then we'll be sliding the e-gear out through the frame and take the whole system out. It's easy. Taking out the frame member and the heat shield here, we have two 10 millimeter uh, hex heads and we have one, two, three, four, five uh, 13 millimeter hex heads. Just to take those bolts out, we've loosened them already and uh, the frame member will come out. There is no tension on it normally, so uh, no worry about distorting your frame by taking out this uh, frame member. The magnetic tray comes in handy so you don't lose your bolts. go frame member is out next we remove the u-clamp that holds the hoses to the frame here we've already loosened the bolt it's a five millimeter allen u-clamp has a welded nut on the bottom so just take the bolt out and uh, pull the clamp aside then uh, two 10, 10 millimeter hex head bolts that hold the reservoir in place we've loosened the bolts already I'm just taking them out now and uh, now comes the important part that is fluid management. Obviously a reservoir is there to hold some extra fluid. The cap on this reservoir has a vent hole so if you were to ship this reservoir uh, with fluid in it or if there was fluid in the system and uh, the reservoir was still connected ultimately that fluid would find its way out the vent hole in the reservoir cap. It's kind of tricky to uh, close that off, so the best step is actually shipping the uh, e-gear system to Top Hydraulics without the reservoir and uh, plugging the hoses instead. Now, if you look at this, there is uh, another set of completely independent hoses routed uh, between these two um, 
key gear reservoir hoses already so we need to take one of these hoses off anyway um, we've already loosened these these are one time uh, use OEM uh, clamps that um, you probably know how to undo you simply get your screwdriver under the uh, edge and uh, flip them up until they come loose and if you haven't done it before it takes a little practice but it's really not difficult so uh, we take off that one-time use and let's start with the smaller hose first um, before we tip everything over let's put some towels over the engine and exhaust area just so that you don't uh, drip any oil on the exhaust that uh, you'll regret later because it doesn't smell good and we just need a little container firmly in place here to uh, um, dump about a half a reservoir's worth meaning a pint or so of fluid into now this reservoir is already empty what we would do is take off the cap dump the fluid we don't have to dump the whole reservoir just a good amount so that we can now um, since this clamp is already undone um, pull the upper hose off and the idea of this hose is 12 millimeters or close to a half an inch so one way to plug it is to just stick in um, some uh, rack, uh, ratchet extension that has a half millimeter uh, diameter and put a regular hose clamp on here and um, now we can turn this whole thing around and dump the remaining fluid from the reservoir and uh, then lastly we can take the uh, bigger hose clamp off and um, hold the whole thing up and uh, this hose is 16 millimeters ID very close to uh, 5 8 inch so you'll find some for example you could find some ratchet extension or adapter that is 5 8 inch diameter and secure this with a, a new hose clamp that then makes it easy to take the rest of the system out and ship it to top hydraulics for a rebuild and upgrade of the whole e-gear system so we have taken the right rear wheel off as well as the uh, inner fender now we're looking at the brake calipers and over here the uh, mounting bracket for the uh, e-gear control unit with its valves on it and the uh, pump for the e-gear um, in order to take these parts out there's not much left there are two uh, 10 millimeter hex head bolts left around the corner accessed from the engine compartment basically screwing it into this uh, uh, frame member then we have uh, two electrical connectors to undo this one goes to the pump this one goes to the control unit and lastly we have to, lastly we have to undo the uh, quick disconnect uh, for the hose that's going to the clutch so um, to get the upper connector out we pull down on the tab and pull and pull and there it is disconnected to get the uh, bigger connector out we push down on this tab and pull and pull and there we go it's off and lastly to get the quick disconnect off um, well one good way is have a pair of long needle nose pliers and uh, get it into the gap of where you are supposed to uh, pull down that um, quick disconnect sleeve or uh, use anything else that you can get in there and uh, get that quick connect to a sleeve to pull down and uh, release there we go I had the pliers up too high before so really the trick is just to push down on this black sleeve of the quick disconnect and at this point we can lift the whole control unit out here we have the e-gear again made by Magneti Morelli for Lamborghini and Ferrari and others 
Anyway, it is uh, bolted to the rear of the transmission uh, with six bolts. We have uh, five millimeter Allen bolts. Two of them are hiding under the exhaust. You access them with a uh, with an angled uh, short uh, Allen wrench. And these six here are easily removed. Let's get those out. And um, after we have the bolts out, we will also uh, undo the electrical connector. Of course, we can undo that first as well. But uh, right now I'm taking these bolts out. Let's get this out of the way. The e-gear itself is uh, pinned to the transmission, so uh, the uh, positioning is exact. You don't have to worry about it wiggling right now. Once you put it back into place, uh, it'll be exact based on those uh, location pins. The hoses going to the e-gear are Teflon hoses. Uh, Teflon hoses are a little sensitive to being uh, over bent. If, you, if your engine had a uh, ser engine out service, if your car had an engine out service and um, the hoses got bent too much, they may easily fail. And of course at Top Hydraulics we provide you uh, better hoses for the system that uh, will not kink as easily and that are uh, optimized for the application. We also provide the uh, heat shielding. We actually reuse the old heat shielding and put another better looking heat shield around that old sleeve. So we double up, no uh, harm in reusing the uh, old shielding and then making it a little better. So anyway, now we're ready to undo the electrical connector. This connector is just for the uh, readouts on the e-gear, meaning the uh, quote-unquote potentiometers, which are actually uh, solid-state um, devices. So, in order to disconnect, we just uh, pinch here and pull the connectors apart. Now we can uh, loosen the e-gear. First time around there is some silicone uh, gasket between the e-gear and the transmission. So first time around when you take this off you may have to uh, pry a little bit wherever you can uh, get your screwdriver in. We have taken this one off once before so it's coming off easily. Now I will lift this up, pull it out, and Turn it around to show you this e-gear in all its glory. Um, one more thing, the e-gear is currently in the neutral position and here are the shift forks in the transmission. Obviously we want to cover the transmission with uh, something clean so we don't get dirt in there and we want to be sure not to move the uh, position of the shift forks the way they are now. As I said the e-gear is currently in neutral position and uh, that is exactly how Top Hydraulics ships it back to you. Um, it's going to be plug and play, just uh, put this whole system back in and uh, hook it back up, then reconnect the battery and uh, get rolling. So finally we have everything ready to pull the e-gear system out. We have taken off the reservoir, we've zip tied some loose uh, hoses to the side to have them out of the way. Uh, we have unbolted the control unit from uh, the frame and unbolted the e-gear at that end. Now it's best to do this uh, with two people. One person lifts out the control unit here, pulls it, and then a second person helps you feed the whole e-gear through under the frame and uh, the whole system is out. Ta-da!